How to not go broke in the Philippines. You will have beautiful scenery, a low cost of living and tropical weather, which leaves us asking the question, what could go wrong? Well, if you're like me, there's one thing that's constantly at the back of your mind, and that is going broke in the Philippines. It is really challenging and it is incredibly elevated in the Philippines. And I mean, that's a, a trend that we're seeing right across APAC at the moment and also globally. We are seeing those high food prices in particular, as well as the ongoing pass through of high fuel prices that are really lifting inflation in the Philippines and lifting inflation expectations. Can you imagine if after years of planning to live in the Philippines, all that time and money you spent preparing was washed down the drain because of being scammed, meeting the wrong kind of woman, or because of something else that happens completely out of the blue? This week, I spoke to a few retiree friends of mine who are based in Davao and Cebu City, and they told me that their biggest fear is having to leave the Philippines and go back to the US because they are broke or because they run out of money. Sadly, this does happen from time to time but it won't happen to my subscribers because today we will address how you can avoid going broke in the Philippines, how you can really live well and at the end I'll be telling you my secret strategies. And away we go! I often get messages asking me is it best to avoid any kinds of romantic relationships in the Philippines. Well actually one time I got a message asking me if it's a good idea to have a vasectomy before going to the Philippines. And a lot of these questions on this topic tend to stem from scams and horror stories about foreigners who are dating Filipinas. Interestingly enough, dating the wrong kind of woman is one of the biggest reasons that foreigners lose money in the Philippines. I've seen firsthand of expats who have been taken advantage of by their Filipino girlfriend and even their girlfriend's family. I often say that if you want to get to know somebody, introduce money because more often than not, their true colours will emerge when money is involved. When you are dating in the Philippines, it's also important to consider the family relationships. Family is everything and support via financial means is often common in the Philippines. For example, if a grandmother needs money for an operation, it's like likely that the family will all support her. And if you are in a relationship and you are part of that extended family, you will be encouraged to support. Now there is a stereotype about Filipino women and gold digging and all that kind of thing, but it's important to remember that not all Filipino women are going to drain your money. There are also some Filipinas who work online and actually earn more than expats. So a complete avoidance of dating is not needed unless of course you don't want to, which is completely fine. But it is important to choose carefully and in other videos I discuss the biggest red flags when dating a Filipina. The link is below but choosing carefully is important and actually it can lead to a committed relationship and if you meet the right woman she can even save you spending a lot of money while living in the Philippines. The location also plays a big part in expats going broke in the Philippines. You may be interested in living in popular areas such as Makati City or Boracay Island, but they can almost be double the cost of living compared to other smaller cities. During my research, I found that the Mindanao region was the cheapest region to live in the Philippines on average. However, because the Philippines is so diverse, you can pretty much live in any city for less. But it's not just the location it's also the accommodation because accommodation is one of the biggest expenses for expats who move to the Philippines. If you are looking to live below your means, you can certainly rent a nice small studio for around 16,000 pesos. If you are living in the prime area, such as right in the city center, a large studio or a one bedroom unit will cost around 25 to 35,000 pesos. But there are also housing and apartment options, which are often much cheaper. You can rent a small house for around 12,000 pesos or 8,000 pesos if you choose to live in a house outside of the city. The accommodation and location both offer convenience, however they can eat up at your budget. So to avoid going broke in the Philippines, it is best to ensure that you have around 25% disposable income each month. Now this is not a golden rule, however the extra cash can help if there is a medical 
medical emergency or a visa fee or something happens that is not in your original budget. Now as a foreigner living in the Philippines you will be charged top dollar in most places and this includes the big purchases such as accommodation as well as the small prices for fruits and vegetables so unless the price is clearly shown it's always best to negotiate. You know one of the foundational truths to all of this is that many expats find it really challenging to stick to a budget while living in the Philippines. Ordering a few pizzas or a few beers is fine but getting into these bad spending habits is common and this can increase your budget while living in the Philippines. I know that it's hard to adopt a Filipino lifestyle. I mean, I've tried to do it for many, many years. I know how difficult it can be. But if you can, you will find that the costs are much cheaper. For those of you who are thinking about the medical stuff, don't worry, I have you covered. Because one interesting topic that's often not spoken about is the medical care in the Philippines for expats. Well, it goes without saying, if you're living in the Philippines long term, insurance is essential. Luckily, there are plenty of affordable options for expats. I've covered local insurance for foreigners in the Philippines but there's also international insurance which is available. One of the reasons that expats go broke in the Philippines is due to high medical fees and I know some expats who have had to go home to the UK to the US because they were unable to afford the medical fees. So getting the right insurance can help avoid any big financial problems in the future. To the Philippines, have a look around. I'm here to tell you how our Filipino history's found. On 1521 of March 16th, we were discovered by an explorer Portuguese. Now there's also something else I need to talk to you about that's very, very important. Because when foreigners come to visit or live in the Philippines, they often see the amazing opportunities around every corner. The country is developing quickly and there are plenty of business and investment options around the country. And this is from natural resources all the way to real estate. If you're planning to live in the Philippines full time, it's always a good idea to get some extra financial resources. However, it's best to be cautious around physical investments and businesses that require you to lock up your capital. One of the reasons that I and many others decide on YouTube is because it's an online business and we're not restricted. I personally invested in free condominiums and was very naive and lost a lot of money. That being said, there are definitely some amazing opportunities and you can certainly get rich in the Philippines, but it's not always easy. It's important to remember what works in some countries doesn't work well in the Philippines and I've seen this a lot with investors and business owners so it's best to fully research the market before putting down any capital. Also please 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 be wary about putting a business or an asset in the name of a Filipino. Unfortunately most parts of the law do not allow foreigners to own 100% of buildings and businesses and so on so it's common to put these in the name of a Filipino but this is naturally risky. One of the best things that you can do to live well and not go broke in the Philippines is to live like you are poor. When you live in the US, the UK, Canada, Australia or any other country, you know how expensive it can be. But when you go to the Philippines, you will feel like a king. It does feel great, especially if you've always wanted to feel rich and coming to the Philippines will give you that sense of power. But this mindset can lead to burning a lot of cash. When we feel that we have money in the bank we tend to spend more, tip more and loosen up the rope so to speak. So I found it really useful to see myself as poor. I save money, invest money and spend money with this mindset. Oh, 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 oh and one more thing, sorry I've got so much to tell you today but one more thing. If you can open up two or three local bank accounts and split your money it's likely a really good idea. There was a few stories that I came across and one in particular where an American expat was dating a Filipina and she found his pin and took his money. Now this is not an everyday occurrence but it's best to keep your money safe and if you decide not to keep it locally a great option is also to keep it in a bank back home. If you enjoyed this video please hit that like button and I will see you in the next video.